All right, everybody, welcome back to uh, another Blue Angels cruiser flight. Today's mission is we are going to uh, go up and test the throttle. Uh, this is the original throttle that I put back in. And somebody asked me what would happen if I had a flap motor failure, since the flaps in here are electric. So we're going to do a go around with full flaps, and we're going to pretend like we have a flap motor failure and not retract the flaps, and we'll see what it does. I'm pretty confident it'll climb like crazy. <laughs> Somebody was asking me if it would actually climb out with the flaps still down. I know it will, but let's go see what it does. All right, here we go. Clear. Caution. Cylinder head temperature. Cylinder head temperature. I have a feeling this throttle isn't going to be as bad as Cylinder last time. Head temperature. Just because it's so much more solid now. We'll see if that's true or not. All right, I know Gordon's going to go flying here in a couple minutes, too. He's waiting for his passenger to arrive, but I just told him I'd meet him in the air. This is the first flight after uh, Oshkosh that I'm doing. No, actually it's not. My dad and I did a flight after Oshkosh, but this is the first flight I'm doing after I took the wheels off and redid the bearings. I re-greased my nose strut because it was a uh, squeak and every time I'd go over a bump. And uh, I also replaced an oil line. Now I had a little drip on this oil line ever since the airplane was new. and. No matter how tight I tightened it, it wouldn't stop dripping. But it was a very, very small Cylinder drip. Head temperature. I just figured I would live with it. Cylinder head temperature. But when I had to cowl off after Oshkosh, I noticed there was actually quite a bit more oil in the in the engine compartment. There was actually a little bit of splatter on the firewall, and uh, so the leak is either getting worse or it's worse when the oil heats up and the engine's running. So I decided to fix it. Um, I was going to replace the nipple on the radiator, but nobody can get me a new nipple. UL Power doesn't know what it is. Zenith doesn't know what it is. Um, Wag Arrow, who I, th I think it's Wag Arrow that carries the UL Power parts. They don't know what it is. I've ordered a couple different ones, and they always turn out to be the wrong size. Um, so I talked to Steve at Aircraft Specialty. They make the, the hoses for this. And I was asking him for advice, and he recommended we just change the oil line. Uh, just in case it's the line and not the nipple. But also he told me about these little formed aluminum crush washers. I think they're called Dell Seals. I'll put a link to them down below. Um, and what it does, it just acts to uh, as a crush washer to really seal that, that line connection in there. So I put one of those in and uh, hopefully it stops the leak. So we're flying with full fuel today. Now by the time we do the go-around with uh, full flaps, you know, I don't know, we'll probably have 26 gallons of fuel on board. So it's full fuel, not quite a gross weight because I don't have a passenger or any cargo in here. It's just me. Just doing a mag, <laughs> not a mag check, but a uh, ignition check. I actually ran the pits today and was doing a mag check on there, and I think I have a bad mag uh, in the pits. So I either got to rebuild that mag or have it replaced or figure out what to do with that. It's always something with airplanes. All right, oil temperature is up. Altimeter is set. There's not much to do on a pre-flight in here. I've got four flight up here. There's my little airplane right there showing on the screen. And it uh, looks like we're ready to go. Price traffic, uh, 7 Mike Delta back to action runway 27 and price. Off the ground already. Man, 
Man, this airplane just flies so nice. Come on, Gordon, your hangar door is not even open yet. Let's go. He's waiting on Gordon. All right, guys, so I've noticed something interesting about the new throttle, or the new old throttle. I have the friction knob here loosened just enough to where I can move the throttle, but I notice that it's not being pulled in. And what I'm wondering is because it is so much stiffer now with this reinforcement plate on the panel and it's not vibrating, I wonder if that's why I can now, it looks like, set it to where I can move it without unlocking the friction lock, but it's not pulling it in. If that's the case, then uh, problem solved. Well, there's the air park down there. Not much going on. Brian's at work. Gordon's taking his good old time. I guess I'll just go fly around until uh, Gordon decides to come up. Well, you know what? While we're over the airport here and just fooling around, why don't we do our uh, full flap go around? So what this will simulate is we got the flaps fully down for landing, and you need to do a go around, but the flap motor burned out, you blew a fuse, and you can't raise the flaps. So let's uh, let's give it a try. All right, I'm putting in full flaps now. Get to trim it. And uh, once I get down to the runway, we'll do a go around and not raise the flaps. And again, the reason I'm doing this is because somebody asked me on, uh, or made a comment on one of the videos if, if the airplane would climb out with full flaps for this reason, if the electric motor, you know, burnt out or something. So just verifying, I got full flaps in there. All right, let's go around. Now I'm not raising the flaps. And it is just climbing like crazy. I'm indicating 50 knots right now. Climbing at 1,000 feet a minute. So there's down there, two of those at that. down like my two deserve Still 50 knots here. So as you guys can see, I mean, we're almost, well, I don't know if we're gross weight, but we're in full fuel and, you know, probably a hundred, couple hundred pounds below gross, but, uh, you know, it climbs out just fine. Right now, at 51 knots, we're doing 750 feet a minute on the climb. Uh, the initial climb was 1,000 feet per minute, so even with full flaps, it'll still uh, go around if you need it to. So now I'm going to bring up the flaps here. All right, flaps are up. I can trim down now. And we'll bring that power back just a little bit. So there we go, there's your answer. Now I guess I'll just go have a little bit of fun until Gordon decides to get his butt out here in his airplane. Is his door open yet? No. All right, everybody, so my uh, consensus is this stiffener plate on the panel really, really made a big difference. I like how the throttle feels solid now. It doesn't move all around. Uh, it looks like I can now have a position on the friction lock to where I can leave it unlocked to where I can move the throttle 
but yet that return spring on the, the throttle body doesn't bring in the throttle. And I have a feeling it's because it's not vibrating like it was before. So that, that was a really good improvement to the airplane. <laughs> All right, I'm sure my camera on the wing got you, so. You good? Yeah. You can come by and wave a crate a little bit one time. See if I can do a little bit of a shorter approach to kind of an Oshkosh approach. <laughs> Pull the power back. Let's just get full flaps in here and make it short. Price seven Mike Delta left base two seven price. How about this airplane? As you point the nose down, man, it really starts picking up speed. County, Delta 568, Delta Charlie, left downwind, 13, Livingston County. Price, traffic, 7-8 Delta, turn to this right, I should never have to touch the throttle. I will get ready for the go round though, just in case I need it. Livingston traffic, 27 November, turn I never once touched the throttle all the way down. Oh, it's going to be a grease. Almost degrees. That was a great flight. Thanks for coming along, guys. <laughs>